Today I'm troubleshooting a Code 90 uh, and low flow light on the Intex. Uh, this is a CS8110 salt water chlorine generator. I uh, just got it kind of out of storage. It hasn't been used for a few years. And uh, I'm not sure if I was having problems with this before I put it away or not. But uh, I quit using it because the, uh, we had an inflatable ring pool and the, uh, the ring finally caught a, a good leak and took it out completely. So um, I've replaced the pool. I got the saltwater generator out and just a few, like maybe 30 seconds after the working light would come on, uh, I would get a uh, beeping alarm, low flow light, code 90. Um, and I checked, of course, for uh, you know, proper operation or proper visible operation of the little flapper, uh, magnetic flapper switch uh, right here. Made sure there were no bubbles in the system. A lot of times a, a, like a large bubble will accumulate around the switch and won't allow it to, uh, to actuate properly. That's, that's good. Um, so right now I'm just troubleshooting. What I've done is I've disconnected the switch and I wired it down. Just this is just to keep it in as basically as a plug to keep the, all the water from coming out. And I jumped the uh, the connection here, the switch contact connection. And so far, so good. It's been running for several minutes with the working light on and it is generating chlorine. There's some bubbles showing up in the water anyway, so. Uh, I will update this as it goes along, but it's looking like I may have to replace that switch. Um, temporarily, I don't know if it's visible, but if you see that little green uh, thing, in the in the water line there that's the end of a zip tie i jammed in the hinge to keep it from dropping at all because even with good flow it it kind of moves a little bit it wiggles so to test the reed switch i uh, placed uh, uh, that zip tie end in the hinge to keep it from moving it's flat up against the uh, the switch body the magnet is i did check for the magnet the magnet is present there's no evidence that the that the magnet is, um, you know, sometimes the, they, they begin to rust and they let go uh, and come out of the little plastic piece. And that hasn't happened. Uh, uh, used a screwdriver tip and it's um, good and magnetic, so it should be actuating the reed switch in here. So it, it may not be. I also, following some of the other advice I've read online, I used... Um, pair of needle nose pliers and I gave these these connections just a little tweak just just kind of smooshed them a little bit uh, so they would still go into the uh, their sockets on the on this plug end but would make better contact and that didn't seem to help at all so I don't believe it's a contact issue between the switch and the wiring um, I don't believe it's a controller issue because it's working so far a lot longer anyway with this jumper in place and uh, I'm kind of, I'm, I've kind of narrowed it down to this uh, magnetic reed switch. So this part is, is inexpensive. It's only about $9. You can order it directly from Intex. And uh, it's looking like I will probably order one of those to get this pool up and running. But for right now, I'm just going to operate it like this, make sure that it will run a full cycle with the, uh, with the jumper in place. And uh, that'll help me at least open my pool, get the chlorine levels where they need to be while I'm waiting for uh, the replacement switch. Now, I, I want to I wanna say it's important that you don't just operate this unit uh, continuously without this in place. This is a safety interlock so that if something happens, say, to your pump and flow stops, you don't have water just sitting in the in the chlorine generation cell not moving. It, it needs to move um, at least for the life of the cell and it may be a, a safety issue as well. I've, I've read other people say that there is, uh, well it breaks the bonds between the uh, hydrogen and oxygen in the water molecules causing gaseous hydrogen and oxygen bubble formation. I suppose it's possible that a flammable or explosive uh, a combination of gases could 
could come out of this if you allowed water to just sit without flowing. Um, so we don't want that to happen, but I, I haven't confirmed that. I don't really know if that's true or not, but better safe than sorry. This is going to be operated under supervision, and I'll make sure that this filter pump is running while, uh, while uh, uh, this jumper is in place and while this unit is powered on. And yes, I, I know you can see that there's, there's some evidence of some leaks here. I've been tightening up fittings and things like that and chasing down leaks. This is a used pool and this is an old setup, so there's going to be some there's going to be some little things that need to be adjusted and fixed and things like that. And I'll try to document as much of that that I think is relevant uh, and throw it up here on YouTube for you guys. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you get your uh, your pool problems fixed if this uh, video helped you.